We're all about the archers. I'm Philippa. And I'm Katie. And we are here to talk to you all about what's happened so far this week. That means we're covering Sunday the 7th of January, Monday the 8th of January and Tuesday tonight the 9th of January. There will be spoilers. This week we cover... Titchener Land and Poppy Parties. Henry and Jack, their future stories and Lily's snooping on staff numbers. Well, Katie, what do you think of the week so far? What do you think about tonight's episode? It's good, yeah. I I liked the way it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger about what's Lower Loxley going to do. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the fact that Grey Gables just seemed to be poaching everybody. <laughs> Didn't really think Oliver was like that, but I'm not sure if it's coming from someone else. I didn't get the feeling that, you know, he's hiding down the lane and jumping out at people that are leaving work <laughs> at Lower Lockley and saying, come work at Grey Gables. I just think maybe Grey Gables are offering more money and maybe better work conditions. And it made me a bit crossed, actually, tonight because, you know, with Lizzie saying Lower Lockley might need to up its game, you think you might actually need to, you know, come on. And all these mystery people this week. We've had Leonie, Connor, Maddie, Veronica, Freya, Trent and Teresa. Now, I've heard of Trent before, but yeah. that's, a, that's a barrage. That's a plethora of of people that we had no idea were I, there. Yeah, I did like um, Trent and Maddie going into the walk-in freezer that was mentioned <laughs> on Sunday, though. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> A bit cold for a cuddle, though, in yeah. the walk-in freezer. Yeah, it's not not the best place. Bike sheds is better. <laughs> and hygienic? I mean, would health and safety be allowing that? I don't know. This is very true. <laughs> but <laughs> Lily went on this fact-finding mission tonight. I felt she'd sort of arranged it. But she had a balayage? A balayage hairdo? Yes, I they kept saying they've obviously just... They've just learnt balayage, I think, because they what, kept putting it in the What is that? It sounds like a it's boat like, yeah. at war. What is a balayage? <laughs> <laughs> it's when you, instead of having, I think this is right, I'm not a girly girl, but instead of having typical highlights, it's a little bit lower down, so it kind of grows out better. It looks a bit more natural, oh. and it's not kind of the streaky highlights, and it's just kind of gradient, so it kind of gradient. looks like... It's just a bit natural. Yes, I mean, from someone who has pink hair, I don't go for subtle <laughs> and natural, but you know. <laughs> so it's not a Viking ship, a balayage, fair enough. That's something that I no. have learned no. tonight. OK, well, we've talked a bit about tonight, but there'll probably be some more. I mean, let's go for faves, first of all. Give me what faves so far this week. I've got quite a few. Um, I did love the fact that Chelsea used the word Mardi because being a Leicestershire girl, I was like, yes, get the Mardi in there. <laughs> that made my day. <laughs> yes, fair enough. That didn't even strike me as regional. It's just that's something that I, you know, I hear from time to time. So it didn't really strike I've had me. It so I had it when I've that. lived in London. Yeah, when I've lived in London, people are like, what? What are you saying? <laughs> They're what? But yeah. So oh. I've had people not understand Mardi and then you cannot explain what Mardi means at all. <laughs> it's oh, just so some Mardi. people have to reach for Google <laughs> Translate for that one. The, the things I'm learning tonight, Definitely. Katie. Thank you. I know, just a genius. <laughs> um, one of my selfish faves, which was a fave for me but not for people of Ambridge, was the fact that Miles has bought the land. I, I thought that was brilliant. I did not see that coming at all. I don't know if you did, but I loved it. I thought that was such a good twist. I think I've made so many predictions. I've covered every eventuality, but I seem to remember there was something about it. But I'm not saying I got I got that right. And it's all it's very intriguing exactly what's going to happen and what they're going to do. I, I know some people are loving it and some people are really not loving it at all but that was a, f a fave for you 
It was in a in a sadistic way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the fact it gives a really good storyline. Yes, it's a fave. We're gonna go with that one. My other fave was Lily and Chelsea tonight when um, Lily was trying to get all the gossip out of Chelsea and she was saying, Oh, because I know you're really popular with everyone and Chelsea was taking it as a compliment and everything, and then Lily said, Yeah, because I always see you standing around chatting. <laughs> and Chelsea went, Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I didn't like Lily digging for information with Chelsea and not offering her any chance of a promotion, just taking everything. I, I didn't feel comfortable with it and I just felt uncom I felt sorry for Chelsea. I thought she was just being mined for information and and the instant dialing the minute Lily was out of the hairdressers. I'm, mm. No, very sneaky. Like what about no. your faves? Uh, well, the fact that Hilda, we now know what's happened to Hilda. She's she's gone with Peggy into the laurels. How they've allowed that, I don't know. But uh, yes, there we are. That Helen's going for therapy. Praise the Lord. Thank goodness for that. Excellent. And I'm very uncomfortable with what's happening with Helen and Titchener Land as... Uh, as who was it tom thank you philippa's brain working slowly uh that that tom called it but i am intrigued i wish in a way we could fast forward to 20 30 40 years time because i feel like the script writers are setting up a really long-term story here and i worry about how they're going to put henry and jack on two very different trajectories in their lives. You know, is Henry going to be nice but poor and Jack's going to be vile but rich? And just how that affects them. And I'm sure they've got lots of bits of paper up on their walls in Archer's HQ at the moment planning that out. But I'm very intrigued. It almost seems like something from Dickens or the Bible. You know, it it, it just seem, seems like a really meaty story to me and I worry worry for them no it's a good point but you know when we're still doing this in 50 years time we can go back to this episode we can say, do you remember when when we're on our little zimmer frames yes. so, we'll yeah, the we're all holograms in people's front yeah. <laughs> we're front we're all holograms in people's front rooms you know be fine oh, feel sorry for everyone having us there just hands that's the that's the last thing i need but yeah i think this is going to be uh, an uncomfortable story for their lives i think uh, surely that's the only reason why this is happening just to illustrate and illuminate the differences between those two boys and uh i don't know if you Definitely. were helen it does... would you sorry if you were helen would you have told henry straight away about the gift i don't know i think i might have waited a little bit i don't think because some people i think were thinking that she should wait until they were all both 18 or until henry's 18 or whatever i don't think i'd have waited that long but i don't think i'd have rushed into it because it doesn't achieve anything to tell him now apart from mm. the fact it could get to him through gossip I don't think it achieved anything saying it now. She could have kind of thought it through a bit more and just had time to process it herself. Because Jack, um, Henry is still a kid. He's still yeah. young. He doesn't need to know everything straight away. Although he acts brilliantly like a better adult than most yeah. people in Ambridge. <laughs> I don't think he needed to know necessarily straight away. But you just kind of think, what what are they going to do with the land? Is it just going to sit there until um... Jack is old enough? It seems weird so yeah i've got a couple of plot predictions there but Ooh. excellent yes because they've Spoiler. got plans for the barn <laughs> and i yeah mm. i do i do worry where that's going to go but uh, food i there were only two mentions of food that i had i don't know if i've missed anything um so the mentions Probably of food not, i'm crossing my fingers Okay, we've got sterling gold cheese. Helen asked Oliver if he'd come for the sterling gold cheese. I noticed she didn't refer to it as Grey Gables gold cheese, and I thought she had done a little bit of rebranding there. But anyway, mm. unless that was the, a different one, but 
my mistake. And also a flask Was that Borsitcher of... blue? Yeah, maybe it was. Borsitcher grey. Oh, lovely. That's got a ring about it. Oh. <laughs> Borsitcher grey for Grey Gables. Mm, delightful. <laughs> uh, and yes, a flask of soup was my other one. Soup was the only one I got. I'm so rubbish at picking up food and then yeah. one thing picks up and I'm like, oh, soup, and then I've missed everything else. But there was nothing. I was, yes, I was quite sad. There were more character names I've never heard of before than there were uh, food mentions this time. I've got to say, for me, there were flops. But I, I'll, I'll let mm. you give your flops first because there seems to be quite a few faves of yours. What about flops? My main flop is this vet story with the whole boost in the profitability, because it's always my worry about vets as well when they're telling you stuff. And you, this has made me worry even more now, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when a vet tells you something, you think, do you really need this? Mm. Is the dog going to need this? Is whatever going to mm. need this? Are you just trying to make profit? Yeah, I, I didn't like that because it put me more on edge because then I, I always second guess them anyway. And now again... I'm kind of, mm, I don't know. So, yeah, that, that properly put me on edge. Um, and then the other two um, in my flops, we've kind of discussed anyway, which was just Grey Gables stealing staff mm. and um, Henry getting nothing from Rob in his will, which we kind of expected and yeah. I didn't really expect him to get much. But, yeah, it still sucks, bless him. Yeah. I'm <laughs> what have you got? Well, I can't believe Helen was shocked and surprised by that because, yes, I think we we presume that would happen. Yeah, Denise, I didn't understand her rage mm. at Alistair. I, it just felt wrong to me. I didn't know, is she? This is very of the of the moment. But is Denise a traitor or faithful? Oh, I like this. <gasps> it's only my short podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and for those who are thinking, what on earth is Philippa talking about? It won't be the first time you thought that. It's because here in the UK, we've got a new series of The Traitors on at the moment. But yes, I wasn't sure what... She, what why was she being so cross? And Alistair is her boss. So what? I, I didn't get that. I love Lillian sort of trying to uh, fix everything. Puppy parties sounded quite a strange idea, but it seemed to bring them together. And yes, your Tommy, Tommy the Pug would, Captain Tommy would love that, wouldn't wouldn't he? Absolutely. We have been to many, many pug parties and this is what has made Lillian Star of the Week. I was proper ah. struggling for Star of the Week. And then she mentioned puppy party and I was like, <laughs> ding! Because <laughs> Tommy's been to pool parties, he's been to Pugcella, he's been to Pugfest. We go to constant pug parties. So, so he's yeah, there. Totally in with that. Yes, fair enough. <laughs> so are you saying Denise is a traitor or faithful if you had to decide what she was? I'd go traitor because mm -hmm. it's not Alistair's fault. It, the, mm -hmm. the commanders come from higher up and it's not his business. He's not the one saying you've got to do the hard sell. He's just been told to pass it down to his staff and that's exactly mm -hmm. what he's done. So, yeah, I, I think she's a traitor. You, what do you think? Yeah, certainly for most of tonight's episode, I thought she was a traitor. She seemed to come around to the idea of a puppy party, but I just don't understand... She's sounding like me when I forget to put my HRT patch on. I don't know if they just need to log a few <laughs> HRT patches on her or something. But there seems more going on than just having to sell stuff that is her job. So, I yeah, that was a, another flop. And Tom. Tom is so useless. He's angry, but he's <laughs> stupid. He's well-intentioned, but he's just wrong. You know, he's wanting, he wished he'd bought the land even if it had bankrupted him and Natasha, he's just he's not helping Helen. He's yeah. just, oh, he's just being Tom. But I don't know who do you think Tom pays them. Yes, who do you think pays the most money, Grey Gables <laughs> or Lower Loxley? This was my sort of question for you. I think Grey Gables are paying more now because mm. they've had this rebrand and they're all jazzy. I think probably before. Grey Gables was bought out and it's all been redone. I reckon Lower Loxley because it was a bit more higher class and a bit more posh. But now that they've spent all this money, I think Grey Gables because they want to, they know how many people it's upset in Ambridge and mm. they also want to get more people in. So I think they're going to be paying mega bucks. 
<laughs> well, we're coming to that time of the week. We're nearly at the end. You mentioned your star of the week. Would you wish to elaborate on that, Katie? No, just all no. the puppy parties. And if the script writers need a pug snuffling in the background, I have a pretty good one who can snuffle and snore as much as you want. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I have, your star? I have two stars. I'll be brief. The first one was Tony slipping in the mud and playing with his train set. I was just like, oh, bless you, Tony. <laughs> but then it has to be Helen's therapist because those are going to be the longest sessions that therapist <laughs> has ever had to deliver. She's going to need a clipboard, a notepad, therapy. some Lucozade, therapy. Her, yes, <laughs> Th those are long. So prepare yourself. Helen's therapist for that. So that's my star of the week. Let's come on to predictions. What's What are your prediction predictions, Katie? So I've got a couple. So mm. first of all, we've got the fact that Paul said he loves selling. So I reckon he's going to leave Ambridge and join the new series of The Apprentice when that comes back. <laughs> so that's going to be my first stupid one that Q will not be impressed with. So that's fine. That's out my system. Don't worry, Q. <laughs> um, Another terrifying prediction is the fact that we may have an omnibus special of Helen in therapy. And it's just an hour and 15 of Helen in therapy. No. I've got enough worry lines. Yeah. I don't we need don't it anymore. <laughs> no, I have to book a Botox to get yeah. to deal with that. Oh, gosh. Very good. I like those. That'll I've, be hard. I've just give, got yes. one. And that there'll be no staff left at Lower Loxley. They'll have all gone to Grey Gables. So poor Freddie's going to have to stop working at the abattoir for Vince and have to come back and, and man everything, which I'm not sure is the right thing for him. But I worry that's what he might have to do. And Lily might actually have to help as well. Who knows? But those are my at predictions. At least it might become a bit more of a might become a bit more of a family thing so it might be quite nice it might bring True. the three of them back together again and they'll maybe work as a team and lower loxley will be a bit quieter but it might be quite nice for them so, well yeah, liz is winding me up and lily so i i want freddie to stay away freddie stay safe <laughs> <laughs> yes well we come to the uh, housekeeping section of the podcast just a few notes for everyone um, the first one is i have charity news there is an event coming in march the 15th of march in hereford bit niche but if you're anywhere near hereford this is one for you and it's an evening you'll like this katie it's an evening with sunny ormond with lillian it's in aid of hop hope scott house a homeless charity there's gonna be behind the scenes stories anecdotes and a question and answer session I'm going to put links in the show notes. So do go on and have a support of that because it sounds jolly good fun. And also I must mention Patreon. We've got new patrons, more patrons. Thank you so much for joining. And we're planning our first event, live event, February, late February, early March. So stay tuned for that. Next week, I'll be on with Q, with Quentin. We haven't got an interview this week because we're now doing it every two weeks, but we've got a jolly good one planned for the week after. So looking forward to that. Katie, I think you're going to be involved in that one and Lauren and myself. But that's it. That's it from us. So it's a goodbye from me. And ta from me. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>